Well, welcome back to second period now. Here we are at Spain Park AP Chemistry. Today is Tuesday, February the 23rd. February is rolling by quickly. All right, so at the first period, we just went through and worked uh, problems one through three on the worksheet that is posted in classroom. And we did number one, uh, which is right here. We just kind of set it up and with a key on number one, again, is that it's a key problem. It's hard to tell that, you know, but you're given all of the initial concentrations and you're given KP, that's how you know it's a Q problem. Now again, this is as far as you will have to go to get it set up. You will never have to do a quadratic equation on my test or on the AP test, okay? But if you do plug it in, you can find that X is 0 0.027. These would be your equilibrium concentrations. All right, now number two is another one that I want to kind of point out. Uh, a little trick. Um, it says the reaction 2NO going to N2 has a K has a value of K at 2400. If 0.61 grams of NO are put into a previously empty 3 liter, calculate the equilibrium concentrations of everything. So we have the reaction 2NO going to N2 plus O2. All gas. So what type of, is this homogeneous or heterogeneous? Homogeneous. Homogeneous, they're all the same phase. Okay? So now it tells me that K is equal to 2,400. Now that's very important, because is that a big or a small number? Big. That's a pretty big number. What does that mean about the ratio of products to reactants? A lot more products. A lot more products, right? When, is, when the K is like greater than a thousand or so, you can assume this reaction is pretty much going all, nearly all the way to completion. So it's really not going to be an equilibrium problem as much as it is going to be just a stoichiometry problem um, where you just kind of plug in. So it's because this is very large, assume the reaction goes to completion. And I'll show you an AP question where they made you know that. Okay? It was a highly missed question because everybody tried to do it like an equilibrium problem. It was just, but the K, I mean, the K was super large. It was, but, so in this case, I have what, 0 0.61 grams of NO put in. Okay, so it's just going to be stoichiometry, grams of NO, and the question asks for how much of each thing, right? One mole over 14 and 16 is going to be 30.01 grams times one mole of N2 for every two moles of NO. So. So, uh, what are the equilibrium concentrations and what is this in? It's in a three liter vessel. So we stop at moles. So what does that come out to? What does this come out to? Somebody do it. 0.61. That's moles, and then so the concentration of N2 is going to equal 0 0.0102 moles over 3 liters. 0 0.0038. Now, because it's 1 to 1, that's also going to equal the O2 concentration. And what are we assuming the NO concentration is going to be? Zero. Assume, and I know you're not supposed to assume. How do we do that? Yeah. Now, so did, did that come out, if you did it as an equilibrium problem, yeah. it came out pretty much exactly the same? Yeah. It was 0 0.0008. That's what For I this? 0.0008, four zeros? Yeah. 
So, in other words, they're saying they, they went and just did, okay, well, 2,400. What, did you, did you do this part? Or do we just do 0.61, figured out how many moles, the initial concentration of this? Okay, so 0.61 divided by 30, divided by 3. And what did that come out to? 0.0068. 0068? Yeah. So then we did minus 2x plus x plus x. Okay. So the problem, I mean, again, on the AP test, you're not going to have the fancy calculator necessarily to put this in for a quadratic. You did a quadratic formula with that? Okay. You're not going to have to do that. It takes way too much time to do that. That's why it took the whole first period. Okay. So, but if you did that and plugged it in, but this is the this is the way that you have to do it simply is knowing that if if k is very large, just assume it goes to completion. It's not really an equilibrium problem. It's a stoichiometry problem. Okay, but it's still equilibrium, and the way you guys did it is correct. It's just we're not going to expect you to be able to do the quadratic. You know, have to do quadratic. Okay, it's good that you know how to do it and that you can do it even on your simple calculator, but it does take a long time. All right, number three. Number three says, okay, so we have SO2Cl2. goes to SO2 plus Cl2. These are all gases. And I'm given 0.5 moles of this. And what is it in? It is in a 5 liter. I am given point I can't read anything. 0 0.035. 0 0.035 of this divided by 5 liters. And this one is equal to 0 .08. 0 .08. Okay, so again, are those equilibrium pressures or are those initial pressures or concentrations? That's initial. Okay, that's kind of a clue. Then also, K is given, KC is equal to 0 0.078. So again, I'm given initial concentrations and the value of K. That means it's what type of problem? A Q problem again. I have to know. I don't know which way the reaction is going to go just looking at it. In the original problems, the, you know, the original K equilibrium problems, you had zero and zero, so the only way it could go would be to the right. But when you're given all of your initials, you have to figure out Q. So let's just go through what, help me out here, what's this? Well, I, that's going to be what, point, point one. This one is, one more digit, seven zero? This one is 0 .0, 1, 6. 1, 6. I didn't hear the one. All right, so those are my initial concentrations. So now I got to calculate Q. It's going to equal 0 .070, 0 .016 divided by 0 .1. So what does that come out to? One, two. Okay, so Q is less than K. What does that mean? It's going to go again, reactional move towards products. To reach equilibrium. Okay, so that means it's going to be minus x plus x plus x. Okay, so that's going to be 
plus x plus x. So 0.1 minus x, 0 0.0070 plus x, 0 0.016 plus x. So again, this is going to be another quadratic that you're not going to have to go past. Okay? But So when we plug in to K, or uh, Q, uh, yeah, K.078 is equal to 0 0.007 plus X times 0 0.016 plus X divided by 0.1 minus X. Using your calculator, X equals what? I got 0 0.0507. Yeah. Okay? So again, that's not anything. So to plug in here, we have to go minus x, 0 0.05. So that means that this is going to be 0 0.0493. Did I do that math right? 8.3. No. I got 9.3. It's going to be 9.3 because it's just 7, yeah. not 17. Okay? This one's going to be 0 0.0577. Mm -hmm. And this one's going to be 0 0.067. Okay? But again, this is as far as you're going to be ever be asked to go. Biggest thing I want you to see, you're given initial concentrations as a value of K, that's how you know it's a Q problem. Okay? All right. I just posted into Classroom this 2001. Okay, I'm going to shine it up on here, um, and then, but you have it in classrooms to go back and look at the actual question, okay? This is going to be our fifth and final type of equilibrium problem. Dissociation of water is just how is the ion, ionic compound going to dissociate? What's going to break up the two? This is what we've been writing for equilibrium expression for this whole unit. Okay? Then, calculate the solubility in moles per liter. Well, what's it given in? What units is it given in? Per. Per 
100 milliliters, right? But I know I'm going to moles per liter. So what can I just change that, that 100 milliliters to 0.1 liter? So how do I go to moles per liter? Molar mass. And I'm going to put grams on the bottom. And I get the molar mass of this, which is going to be 143.35. I'm assuming you all know how to do the molar mass. 107.9 plus 35.45. So what does this turn out to equal? Anyone, anyone? Six point two one times ten to the negative six. I got to the negative seven. Did you divide by the point one? Oh no, that's what I meant. Okay, so that's just changing grams per one hundred milliliters to moles per liter. That is something. This is very important that you know how to do that. Okay. Just, just saying. Make sure you know how to do that conversion. It's very simple, but make sure we know how to do that. So then C, or really it's A, I, 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 not just stuff and stuff. Calculate the value of the KSP. All right, well, KSP is going to equal AG plus times CL minus. Okay? This is telling me how much dissolves, right? It says this much will dissolve. So what's my AG plus and what's my CL minus going to be? This, right? Because it's one to one. So it's really just going to equal 6.21 times 10 to the minus 6 squared. 3.5. Six times ten to the minus eleven. Times ten to the minus eleven. Now I will tell you that the KSP at twenty-five degrees is one point eight times ten to the minus ten. So if at twenty-five it equals one point eight times ten to the minus ten, but at 15, it equals 3.86 times 10 to the minus 11. Is this an endothermic or an exothermic dissolving process? Okay, because as I increase the temperature, what happens to my solubility? It increases. So by adding heat, which way is it shifting the equilibrium? To the right, we're having more like this, less like this. As it dissolves, this is increasing. Okay, so I can know that because the solubility is increasing with temperature, it's an endothermic reaction or heats on the left side. That's not part of this question, but it's a good question. All right, so that's all number one. One A, B. Now. At 25, the KP for lead is this, and the KP for silver, here it is at, at 25, okay? Now, if 60 milliliters of this and 60 milliliters of that are added, will a precipitate form? So what do we have to do on this one? Find Q, right? And then but before we even find Q, now we're mixing which, which one, if I'm putting NaCl and lead nitrate together, which one of these two precipitates am I going to be really dealing with? The lead chloride, right? So I can totally ignore this information for right now. Not because mixing these two is just going to make this one. So I need to know what my lead concentration is. So how do I find that? That's what we did at the very end of class yesterday. What's it going to be? Now this one's actually a little bit easier because it's 60 milliliters and you're adding 60 milliliters. So when I'm going to do the dilution, it's going to be 60 
over what? 120, in other words, just half, times my initial concentration of 0 0.04. So I know it's 0 0.02. Okay? And I'm putting in... Okay? Well, that's the CO, yeah. I was just looking at that, I was just realizing. Okay? So my lead is going to be basically the same thing. It's one to one. I'm putting one lead in. Okay? So what's my lead? My, my uh, this is CL. It's going to be the same thing. 60 over 120 times, what is that one? Point zero three. So it's going to equal point zero one five mole. So what do I do next? Uh, Find Q. It's going to equal point zero one five times point zero two zero what? Three. Squared. Because we're going to have PbCl2 going to Pb2 plus plus 2 Cl minuses. So my KSP is going to have that 2 in the square. Right? So what does that equal? Somebody plug that in for me. 6 times 10 to the negative 6. 6 times 10 to the minus 6. How does that compare to my given K here? K is less than, I mean Q is less than K, therefore no precipitate. Okay, so this is like example like number 4, fourth type of KSP problem, little precipitate form. Okay? Now, okay, I'm going to just erase this top part because it, it doesn't relate at all. So now it says calculate the equilibrium value of lead in one liter of saturated lead chloride to which 0.25 moles of NaCl is added. So, what type of problem is this? <laughs> no. Lead chloride, but I'm putting it into a solution that contains NaCl. The neutral ion. Not neutral. Neutral. Common ion problem. This is number three, problem type number three. Because I'm no longer putting it into just pure water, I'm putting it into a solution that has a common ion. Okay? So, a saturated solution means a maximum dissolved. So, in this case then, this is what B, this is 1, this is going to be 2. So now I still have my lead chloride. So I want to know what's, it's uh, calculate my lead co concentration, this. So if I, this is going to be x, this is going to be plus x. I'm going to start with zero, this. But I'm going to start with how much of my chloride? 0.25. And it's in one liter, so 0.25. My initial of this is 0.25 molar, but then it's going to be plus x of that again. So, my K is given as? Would it be 2x? No. Yeah. Yes, but it's not going to matter. <laughs> yes, it would be plus 2x. Sorry. But my K is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to x times 0.25 
plus 2x. So why didn't it matter whether it's x or 2x? It was negligible. Because x, if we're going to assume x is negligible, therefore 0 0.250 plus 2x approximately equals 0.250. it up so it's going to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by 0 0.250 squared is equal to x is equal to my lead concentration which equals 2.56 times 10 to the minus 4 okay notice that it was at 0 0.015 in pure water. Now it's down to times 10 to the minus 4. 100 times less soluble. Okay, so this is a common ion problem. This is my common ion, the chloride. It's not <coughs> pure water. Look at the wording of it, the how, it's, the how it's given. It's in to which this much has been added. That's telling me, okay, I'm not in pure water anymore. I'm adding something in. Okay? So this is a good review of all the different types of KSP problems. Just finding, you know, what the molar solubilities are, okay? Um, will a precipitate form, common ion problem. So now we're going to go to our fifth and final. Okay, so we have all of this, right? Everybody's got all that that needs it and wants it. Because I'm going I'm to use the whole board to do this last one. Okay, now, this time I'm going to add... NaCl is slowly added to a beaker containing both silver nitrate and lead nitrate. So now I'm going to have the possibility of lead chloride forming and silver chloride forming. So okay, so I'm going to have well lower lower it down. Okay, so in my solution, I have lead floating around, and I have silver ions floating around. Now, I also have nitrate ions floating around that are spectators aren't going to do anything. I'm going to add in some chloride. So lead chloride and silver chloride are both going to want to form but one will precipitate before the other. And this is kind of what our lab is going to be on Tuesday. We're going to do a lab on Thursday with Le Chatelier's principal. We're going to do a lab on Tuesday. Okay? I'm not sure when the test is going to be because there's a bunch of practice problems I want you to work and we're not going to have time to get them all done by Friday. So, uh, we'll see on the test, but it's not going to be Friday. Uh, just when you get back. I see smiles all underneath your masks. Okay, so what I have to do is I have to do use the KSP for each one and find out which one does the chloride ion concentration have to be the least amount for a precipitate to form. Okay, so I know it tells me is added to a beaker. I know what the silver ion concentration is and I know what the lead ion concentration is. That's how much is in there. It's not a dilution problem because they're saying it's in a beaker where these are the concentrations. So, for lead, okay, KSP for the lead chloride is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, is not, not molar. KSP is equal to the lead concentration, which it tells me the lead is 0.15. Okay. 
then times my CL minus squared. So 1.6 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by 0.15, take the square root, is equal to CL minus. Somebody get that for me, for a favor. I'm just finding out what's the chloride ion concentration have to be for a precipitate to form. I know the KSP, I know what lead is. This times this cannot exceed this value when it does a precipitate form. So I'm finding out what chloride ion concentration is necessary. And it turns out to equal 0 0.0103. Okay? So anything greater than that is going to cause a precipitate to form. This squared times this equals that. So that means that this is the maximum amount of chloride that can be in the four precipitate forms. That's what KSP tells me. I'm going to do the exact same thing for silver. Silver chloride is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10 is equal to my silver concentration, which is... 0.12 times my chloride. Now it's just 1 to 1 because it's AgCl. So I just divide 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10 divided by 0 0.120 is equal to my Cl minus concentration here that will cause a precipitate. And that one is 1.5 times 10 to the negative negative 9. Notice this amount is way, way, way smaller than this amount. So in other words, as I'm putting the chloride into my solution, we're going to reach this concentration way faster than we're going to reach that concentration. And when we reach this concentration is when the silver chloride is going to begin to precipitate out. Lead and chlorine can stay together. So Therefore, because less Cl minus is required to precipitate AgCl, the AgCl will precipitate first. So you calculate, you have to do the KSP expression for both, calculate how much of the thing that you're adding, which one requires the least amount of what you're adding. That's the one that's going to precipitate first. Now, I'm going to add in number four. How much of the first fat ion to precipitate remains when the second cation begins to precipitate. That's how, this, that's how this question gets asked, because they can't give away, they can't tell which one's first and second in the problem, but, you know, because you've got to solve for that in this previous problem. So, which cation precipitated first? Silver. The silver. So this one was first. So it's saying how much of the silver remains when the lead begins to precipitate? Well, when is the lead going to begin to precipitate? when the chlorine is there. So in other words, when the chlorine gets to this, what's silver going to be? Okay? Since I don't need this anymore, I do need the KSP values, but... And just for the record, again, to release your stress, this problem is all bonus. It's not on the AP test anymore. But it might be in college. And it's just a great problem. And this is what our lab is going to be about.
okay? So I'm gonna use my KSP for silver because I wanna know how much silver, that's what the question is. How much silver when the second one begins to precipitate? So I'm gonna say 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10, that's the KSP for silver chloride, is equal to, now this time I'm gonna solve for my silver when the chloride gets to be that concentration. You follow me on that? That's, this is the complicated part. So AG plus is equal to, not very much. Times 10 to the minus 8 molar. Okay? That's how much remains. Sometimes they say percent silver remaining. So, how would I find just the percent remaining? The act of the final over initial. So, 1.75 times 10 to the minus 8 molar divided by what we started with was 0.12. So what percent is that? It's a very small percent. Okay, so that's the percent of AG that remains in solution. A very, very small. Pretty much we precipitated all that. So in the lab that we're going to do, okay, we're going to determine the amount of um, sodium chloride in a mixture of sodium chloride and sodium nitrate. Okay? So we're going to have a, a mixture that we're going to then dissolve into water and it's going to have uh, chloride and some bunch of nitrates floating around and then we're going to put in some potassium chromate. Okay. We're going to add in silver nitrate. So the silver is going to want to bond with chloride and it's going to want to bond with the chromate. But it's going to preferential, just like on this one, it's going to, the silver chloride is going to precipitate out first. This is called white AGCL, is white, AG2. CRO4 is a bloody merry red, tomato juice red, okay? So we're going to be adding the silver nitrate, and it's going to go from a clear solution, it's going to be getting white and cloudy as the white precipitate forms, and it's going to settle out. But once almost all of the chloride is gone, the chromate will begin to form, and it'll turn red. So as soon as we see any red, we're going to stop the titration and we're going to say, okay, we're going to assume all the chloride and we're going to find that it's going to be somewhere around this percent. It's, it's, it's all used up. So pretty much we're, we're, it's called selective precipitation. It's separation by selective precipitation. We can separate out the chloride from the other ions by precipitating it out and use this as my indicator. When this forms, then I'm going to assume pretty much all of this is gone. Okay, so we're going to do that lab just to kind of figure out. So I'm going to give you a mixture of solid, that is NaCl and NaNO3. Well, the only part that's going to mix, the only part that's going to react is the NaCl. This is just going to be spectator ions. So we'll be able to figure out how many moles, based upon how much silver we added and the concentration of the silver, we'll know how many moles of this we added, which means we know how many moles of this reacted, which means we can figure out how many moles or grams of NaCl that were present, divided by the total mass of the sample, and we can figure out the percentage of NaCl in our mixture. Okay, we're going to separate by selective precipitation. All right. All
good stuff. Now, I had hoped that we were going to work on these problems more today. But wait. He got two. Did you not? No? Nope. I thought for sure that was two. Sorry. But wait. There's more. Yes. <laughs> Can't ever get enough. Now, we only have an itty bitty little bit of time left. So let's look at this one that I'm giving to you right now. I think that's two. I think that's two. Look on the sheet that I'm giving to you in the back. It says the year 2016. So let's take the last seven to eight minutes. This is, this is the new format. This should be about a seven or eight minute question. It really can be less than that. And as far as the drawing, go ahead and draw it right onto this. probably do the whole thing even on the bottom just below it just solve the whole thing Or A, do we include water in the equation? No. That's what many students did that year. They tried to put water into the equation.
What type of problem is B? It's a common ion problem, right? Because it's you're putting it into a solution that contains 0.1 molar calcium nitrate. So you're going to have a set setup that looks like this. Okay, do you guys agree with my number? 5.7 times 10 to the minus 4th? I did it quick. Because so we're going to get 0 0.10 plus x times 2x squared. So x is going to equal the amount of calcium that's in the solution. Okay, so that's equal to my calcium ion concentration. So it's just a common ion, so it's going to be the calcium is going to be plus one, point 0.1 plus x. The hydroxide is going to be my 2x. Plug it into my equilibrium expression. Two, this is going to be 4x squared. 4 times point 0.1 is point 0.4. I'm dividing by point 0.4, taking the square root. Now, when I want to draw this, it says to put four waters. Which part of the water is going to attach to the calcium, the oxygen or the hydrogen? The oxygen. So all you do is Mickey Mouse ears. You put four of them, exactly four. No more, no less. Do not label oxygen and hydrogen. Do not put charges onto the oxygen and the hydrogens. Simply put it in like this. They give you what, what it's supposed to look like. Just do it just like this. 